So here we have my um, setting mists. I have two of the Revolution Hyaluronic Fix. I do also have two of the Glow Revolution in, I believe, yes, Eternal Glow. I have got another one of it. I'm not sure where it is. It's, it's unopened. It's probably fallen off my desk. But I do have two balls of this, just to be candid and honest. Um, I have one of the Mark Magic Magic's uh, Prep and Set Spray. I have one of the Glow Fix Spray, which is an illuminating one from Revolution. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm very excited to. I have three of these Collection Dewy Makeup Skin Mists. As you can see, this one has been used a fair bit. Most of the writing is rubbing off, but I do very much like it, hence why there are so many. Same with the Hyaluronic Fisks and the Glow Revolution. I really, really like them, so I have more than one. And then lastly, in the mist category, I have two Pixie Mists. These guys came in a set, I believe. One is the Makeup Fixing Mix. Fixing Mist, I should say, sorry. And the other is the Glow Mist, which is the oil two-parter one that you have to like shake before you use. So those are my setting sprays. Next up, I have my primers, which is a surprisingly large category. I didn't realize I had so many primers, to be honest. Um, so starting from over here, I have Becca. Um, I actually have a full size of the first light primary filter and I have two of the backlight primary filter. As you can see, um, both are open, but this one is almost empty. So we're working on using that guy up. I have two from number seven. They're the Airbrush OA primers. One is a color correcting and the other one is radiance boosting. I've used the colour correcting one, it's quite nice, it has a bit of a silicone-y texture to it. I haven't used the Radiance one, so I can't really comment on it. Um, I have a colour correcting primer from L'Oreal, it's one of their infallible ones. It's a very liquidy, very watery primer, but it is really, really good. It's amazing colour correction on it. Pop that guy away. Um, I have two Avon primers, I have one from MARC, the Magic Face Perfector, which is um, a bit more like a pore filling primer, very similar to a couple other ones that I have. And then we have the a new Skin Transforming Primer, which is very similar to the MAC um, Prep and Prime Primer, I think that's what it's called. The one that comes in like a back black um, pump bottle. Um, I have two from Max Factor, the Facefinity one, which has been discontinued, sadly. And then the Smoothing Miracle, which is very similar to the Mark one, and some other ones here. The Clarins. These are two of the Clarins. Um, what are they called? Instant Smoothing Perfecting Touch. And these are pore filling primers, again, very similar to Smooths. Miracle and the magic one. Um, yeah, they're they're really nice. I quite like the little sample sizes that you get of it. The length of time I've had them, I don't think it would be worth my while ever purchasing a full size of that. Um, the pore minimizing one from full, uh, Smashbox. This is, again, along that ilk. It's very, very concentrated. Again, sample size has lasted me a long, long time. So I'm quite happy with those guys. The Niod Photography Fluid is very similar to the, um, the Becca Backlight Primary Filter except a lot more liquidy and doesn't quite have the sort of longevity of a primer. This is more of like a skincare product type thing that sort of worked its way into the primer category. And the Laura Mercier um, Radiance Primer really really like this again very similar to the um, backlight primer filter but it doesn't have a like a longevity factor to this again it it is like a primer it's a really good primer definitely more of a hydration type deal than a longevity type deal I have two here from 
Makeup Revolution, the Revolution Pro Prime and Hydrate, and the Revolution Pro Hydra Matte Primer, neither of which I have used, so we'll just set those aside. The YSL All Hours Primer, very similar to the Facefinity, a very liquidy, watery type, almost glue-like primer. I really very much enjoy it. Um, same with the Facefinity, this just is a very, very, very expensive dupe for that kind of thing. Um, a really, really cheap dupe for that kind of thing, of course, is your Nivea Men's Sensitive Aftershave Balm. This is two ninety nine for hundred mils. This guy was twelve ninety nine for thirty mils, and this guy is. I don't even want to think how much for thirty mils. Is it even thirty mils? Oh no, it's it's at least forty mils. You're getting a little bit more value for money with this guy. Um, but I'd say this was at least thirty six pounds, or is priced around that much now. So Nivea Men Poche Balm is something worth looking at. And then lastly, we have the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Balm. This is perfect for the winter. If you're still wanting to use a sort of full coverage, long wear, old school type foundation that can be quite drying, this stuff is, please don't hate me, the balm. <laughs> There's no way of talking balm, saying it's the balm and it just, uh so cringy but there are my primers like I say there's a lot more there than I I thought there was so yeah so on to concealers which I knew was a large category but um again I think this is slightly larger than I had anticipated it uh, apologies for the noise my cat has decided to start bottling under the bed so starting over the side, I have two um, PowerStay concealers in the shade, same shade. Um, I managed to pick them up for free. Um, I haven't tried them yet, so I'm not going to talk about them, although I do like the foundation that goes along with them. We have the Revolution Pro Full Cover Camouflage Concealer, which I believe the foundation's been discontinued, but I'm still seeing the concealer on the website, so I'm not sure if this has gone yet or not. But I really, really like this guy very much. I'm missing a concealer. Okay, so I just realized I've misplaced the concealer I was about to liken this to, which is the Lancome Ephesus. I can't remember. It's the one that comes in a tube. It is like an illuminating, it's like a hydrating full cover concealer. It is amazing, it is beautiful. This is very similar to it, as is this guy, the NYX Gotcha Covered Concealer. In fact, this is pretty much a dead-on dupe for it. Again, this has been discontinued, which really, really sucks. Um, one that I can recommend that I know is still about is this guy, again from Revolution. This is the Ultimate Coverage Crease Proof Concealer. Very difficult to see the writing on this packaging, but um, yeah, really like this guy. Um, I have my three Tarte Shape Tapes. Um, these were in my makeup kit, they are now in my personal stash. So they are there. Um, I have two L'Oreal concealers. I'm a huge, huge fan of the Touche, uh, the Perfect Match Touche Magique that comes in a silver clicky tube. I saw these guys and I thought that they would be great. They're all right. I like the Touche Magique better. I have them in two different shades. 1C and 1N. Um, I have the Aqua Luminous Concealer from Becca. It's it's a concealer. <laughs> it gets the job done. Same with the Smashbox and the Naked Skin Concealers. I don't really, I don't rave on them. They're they're good. They do the job. Um, so yeah, there's that. I have two other Revolution concealers. I have the Conceal and Define and the Conceal and Hydrate. I like the Conceal and Hydrate. I'm not so keen on the Conceal and Define. I find it's far too drying and cakey. We have the Studio Sculpt, Studio Studio Finish Matte Concealer. Um, haven't really tried it on my face, so I can't really tell you how it is. Um, the All Hours Concealer again is 
pretty much like the other three high-end concealers I showed you. It's good. It does the job. It's a concealer. It's, it really bugs me when I buy a high-end product. I'm like, eh, does the job. But that's how I feel. Uh, the NARS. I'm also missing a NARS concealer. What is going on here? Okay, I should have a bottle of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. But it seems to have gone walkabouts. Um, this is the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Which I think I've tried once or twice. Um, I've definitely swatched it a few times. But I can't remember how it performs on the skin. So there's that. This guy I really like. This is the High Definition Concealer from Smashbox. This is so good at correcting the under eyes. I really highly rate this product. It's very similar to one from Clinique, the All About Eyes Concealer, which has been discontinued. That stuff was amazing. You got like 15 mils of it, which was insane for a concealer. And you just needed the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little pinprick of it, and it was beautiful. This is a very similar product. Same with the um, Ultra HD concealer from Makeup Forever. I'm not sure if they make this because for some reason with Makeup Forever they come out with a bunch of stuff, people buy it, they rave about it and within like a year they change it. So yeah. Sorry I needed to drink some tea, wet my whistle if you will. Um, so that's those two concealers. Then we have the Hydra Luminous concealer from number seven which I really like. I really like this. I really like the foundation that goes with it. Um, I can't wait to back back to using it. So we'll just set that guy down here. The Born This Way Concealer from Too Faced. I think I've maybe used it once or twice. I can't remember anything about it. Um, I remember being a bit eh about the foundation. So I'm not I'm not too sure about the concealer, but I'll use it up. I will keep it and use it up. And then we have the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer, which I used to use all the time back in the day, like back in 2010, 2011, when the beauty community was a baby. Um, so yeah, I picked it up in Nostalgia a while ago and I haven't actually used it yet. So we'll keep that here. And then I have my Makeup Revolution Concealer Palette, which, um, you guys know what these things look like. I mostly use this for um, carving brows and setting eye primer, well creating eye primer. Um, but yeah, so those are my concealers. There's a fair, fair bit there. A bit more than I thought there was, but yes. We will work on it, we will get them down. We are on a mission. lastly for this segment I have my powders. I don't have very many pressed powders so we will just get those guys done and out of the way. Um, I have one from number seven. This is the cream touch powder. It's very similar to like a Max Factor cream puff type powder um, except it doesn't have that really old lady smell. Which is a bonus. And it's 20 grams of powder for I believe like $7.99. It's a freaking steal. So if you need a pressed powder for on the go, get that guy. Or um, get this guy, which is 16 grams. The matte maker from Maybelline, as you can see, mine has taken a beating and a half. So there is that guy. And lastly, I have one from Avon. It's the Flawless Mattifying Press Powder, which I haven't used yet, so I can't comment on it. I have my four Ben Nye powders. I have Super White, Buff, Rose Petal, and Pretty Pink. I actually really like them. They're just a really, really, really awkward delivery system. So as I'm using up powders throughout the year, I'm going to sort of repurpose containers so I can use my Ben Nye powders. Um, I have the Revolution powder, which goes along with the launch of the Conceal and Hydrate Foundation. I don't really like it. It's it's like a HD powder, but really not a good HD powder. Not a big fan. 
speaking of HD powders, I have the RMS Unpowder. Um, this is like mattifying on steroids. You only need the tiniest, tiniest little amount of this and it will make your skin velvet. Any more than that and you will look like a desert. Um, so yeah, it's a learning curve. The Mark 1 I haven't used yet so I can't really talk about it. The number 7 powders. I have two of them. They are called the Perfect Light Loose Powder. I... Goodness, Crimini's cat. Away. Oh, Sorry, every time I want to do something in here, the cat just goes crazy. So I have two of the same loose powder, the Perfectly Perfect Light Loose Powder. One is almost empty, one of which hasn't been opened. I really, really like this um, powder, so I'm perfectly happy with having two of them. The Estee Lauder, what are you called? The Perfect Perfecting Loose Powder. Almost empty. This is kind of like a silica powder, an HD powder, kind of cross with a general powder. Um, it's nice if you want to sort of mattify, but not risk looking like a desert. Um, would really recommend that guy. I have my two um, Avon pearls. I have one in, what one's this one? Fair and one in light. And these are just kind of very similar to the Guerlain pearls, except like a tenth of the price. Um, but they're beautiful. They have a really nice finish to them. I do also have the color correcting pearls. I have one which is open and one which is still in its container. Um, so yeah, I'm clinging on to those guys. Really like them. We have the um, Clarins Loose Mineral Powder, which is in the darkest shade, um, but it has a really nice colour to it. It's perfect if you're wanting to add more colour to your skin, um, especially in the winter when I can look really ghostly. This comes in very, very handy. The Becca HD powder again. This has a kind of color to it, a nice sheen as well. I've only used it a couple of times, so I'm not going to comment too much on it. The Secret Brightening powder from Laura Mercier. Really like this. This has a very nice so soft focus effect, very diffusing, um, blurring, very nice. But you wouldn't really use this all over your face. It is far too small amount of product. Um, so yeah. Then we have the Sicily powder, which again has a bit of a diffusing, blurring effect, has a sort of pigment to it that sort of brightens. I haven't used it too much because again, the delivery system of this, I really don't like. It's a very awkward container with the sifter and the puff and I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And look, I just kicked a bunch of powder out and wasted some. No happy. And then lastly, we have like my Pride and Joy. This is a beautiful powder. To be perfectly honest, it's just like a silkier version of the number seven powder. I did not buy this with my own money. I saved up my Boots points and bought it. I would never recommend anyone buying this with their own money. Although it is really good value. You do get a full like 30 grams with some powders. You may only get like 10. Um, I think that's what you get with the Sicily one, isn't it? Um, 12 grams. 12 grams for this guy and I'm pretty sure this is like almost 40 pounds. That's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so yeah, I really like the Chanel powder. If you have the Boots points to get it, knock yourself out. You will not regret it. Um, if you want to buy it, you might regret it. I just realised how horribly red my hands are. Apologise. It's like the end result of extremely ramped up hand washing. Necessary, extremely distressing on the skin, but necessary. So that is my powder stash. Um, I'm actually surprised. I thought I had more powders than this. Um, so yeah, the that concludes this little segment of my makeup stash. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Um, a few more videos to come that will be uploaded throughout the month. So I'll catch you guys later. Thanks so much for watching and bye bye.
actually tell a lie, I forgot my Laura Mercier candle glow powder, which uh, looks like this, isn't it a beauty?